Okay, so we've done the de definition of derivative at a single point. What about the formal definition of a derivative? You're going to see it has some very similar thoughts to what we have done before. And so I'm going to start it kind of the same way. Let's look at, if you have, again, a function of f of x, and I labeled point p at x, and its y-coordinate would be f of x. And instead of naming this point, I told you this little piece here was delta x, or a change in x. So what would be the coordinates of point q? So the x-coordinate would be x plus delta x, and of course the y is going to be f of that thing. So you have the, this ordered pair, your x comma y, and that is point Q up there. And just like we did the other day, if I ask you for the slope of the secant line, so the line through P and Q, and let's do Q minus P, we're going to get that slope to be F of X plus delta X minus F of X change in y's over x plus delta x minus x, I forgot to write the x, minus x. I can do a little canceling, and of course I would simplify just to f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x, and that would be the slope. And just like the other day, if I ask you, again, what would make the slope of the secant line closer to the actual slope of the tangent line? So what would make, again, I'm, I'm ultimately trying to find this slope here. What would make that slope of the secant line a better approximation? Just like we did before, we would move point Q closer to point P. Okay, what does that mean? If P is getting, if Q is getting closer to P, what's happening to delta X? Delta X is getting smaller and smaller. So delta X, smaller and smaller. Or in other words, let's use some calculus words. In other words, the limit, or the uh, delta X, delta X, is going to zero. This space in here is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so delta x is going to zero. So the formal definition of a derivative, derivative is f prime at x is equal to the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And that is the formal definition of a derivative. I will also tell you you're going to see it both ways. And honestly, I kind of like this second way better. Uh, but it, it doesn't, it's kind of hard to make sense of it without calling it delta x. And I wanted you to see that once because on AP, you could see it both ways. But as we, as we work the problems, I kind of like this one better. f prime of x is the limit, and all it is, is instead of calling delta x, delta x, I'm going to use the letter h. It just gets a little confusing with the x and the delta x. People see those as the same variable, and they are not. So this is the one I'm actually going to use on the homework because they look like two separate variables, and I can keep it straight in my head. So you have to memorize that definition of a derivative, but remember it's just, it's the different quotient, again, that we talked about, that you're subtracting the y's and you're subtracting the x's. So it's the same, same thing. Now, what you can see here is that this f prime, the, the x is any value of x. So it, this is gonna give me a formula. It's not gonna give me a number out unless the derivative is constant it's going to give me a formula for any uh, particular x value. And so if you, get, if you use the formula and you get a good number, 
then that means it's, the function is differentiable at that point. So if you hear that word, differentiable, what does that mean? Because I, I, I want to be able to say that and you know, if I say, oh, the function is differentiable there, what does that particularly mean? It means that you can take a derivative at that point and not get, well, I'll just say, I'll just say it positively, and get a defined slope. You can't get, an, it's not a vertical tangent where you get undefined or something like that. You get a defined slope. And so since we're discussing this notation, talked about it, I want to make sure you understand when things are written what it means. The derivative, this is kind of the one I was using. So if the function is given in if it's given in function notation, f of x, then f prime of x, that's how this is read, f prime of x means the derivative of f of x. Can you find the second derivative of f of x? Yes, you would have f double prime, and that's how that's read. Technically, you can get the third, fourth, and fifth derivative, and we'll, we'll get there, but we don't need to stress about that yet. yet. But you also need to know another notation is that if the, if the equation of the function is given in terms of y, you need to know that when you see dy dx, that means the derivative, the change in y over change of x and, and at any point. And so that means uh, dy dx means the derivative of y with respect to x. So it kind of looks like that d kind of, I mean, represents the idea of uh, slope and it kind of hopefully can you can remember that when you see dy over dx that means the derivative or the slope of the tangent line. The second derivative notation is a little bit looks a little bit weird um, but that is the second derivative and again we'll talk more about that notation when we when we start taking the second derivatives but I just wanted it here in your notes. Now what are you gonna be doing on your homework? Is you're gonna be doing finding f prime for a particular function. And so let's look at this one. Get up here so I've got a lot of space because these will take you some paper. Um, so here's the deal. Remember what the formal definition is. I'm gonna write again the blanket statement here f prime of x because the more and if you would write it on your homework then you would if you wrote it up, down on every problem my guess is you are going to have it memorized by the time you get to class tomorrow and I'm actually gonna do one thing first now if you don't need to do this that's fine but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find just this piece I'm going to find f of x plus h. Now yesterday you worked on the composition. If I said, guys, find f of 7, you would put 7 in parentheses and go 7 squared plus 2 times 7. If I said find f of a plus 4, you'd put a plus 4 in parentheses and do a plus 4 squared plus 2 times a plus 4. And that's what I'm going to do with this f of x plus h. I'm going to recopy this equation, and where there is an x, I'm going to put x plus h. So this is going to be x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h. Now since I'm, I'm going to have to do this anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and simplify that and kind of clean that up. I'm going to multiply this out, Remember, remembering that I'm going to have an inner, don't forget that 2h plus x plus h squared, and then I'm going to deriv uh, distribute those two together, and there's really not anything I can clean up beyond that. So I'm just going to kind of do that separately, 
And now let me plug it back into my equation. I have the limit as h goes to 0. f of x plus h, I'm just copying all that stuff down. x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h. Now what does this say? Minus f of x. Well, here's what f of x is. If I do the opposite of x, f of x, wouldn't that change the sign of every term in f of x? So I'm just going to go minus. I like to just save myself a step and kind of distribute as I go. And I would have over h. Now, what thing has to happen? Remember, what thing ha has to happen is eventually I'm going to have to cancel that h on the bottom because that h on the bottom is what's causing me to get 0 over 0. So look at what happens on the top. x squared and x squared, negative 2x and positive 2x. And then what happens? Do you see that everything that is left has an h in it? So I'm going to do one more factoring step where I take out an h and I would have 2x plus h plus 2 over h. These two h's now cancel, and what would I be left with? Well, f prime of x would be equal to what? If I let x, excuse me, h be 0 with direct substitution, I would get 2x plus 2. And this is my final answer. Find f prime of x. Well, I just did it. Now, let's see what that means. But before I do that, people, after you simplify and you multiply all this stuff out and you cancel, if what you have left doesn't have, that uh, they don't have H's or you have an extra X, like let's say, let's say, for example, I forgot to distribute the negative and this 2X right here I had as a positive 2X. So these two x's wouldn't cancel, so I'd have plus 4x. You know that something is wrong. Because what I'm telling you is that every single time, when you do f of x plus h minus f of x, all the stuff with just x's better cancel out. So that what you have left all has h's in there. Now you have to show me the right stuff. If your algebra, I don't grade the final line. I grade from step one to step two to step three. I mean, I kind of look down your, your paper and everything has to match up. Your lines have to be equal. You have to have it written like I do. Okay, everything's labeled. It's neat. I can read it, etc. So you have to show me your work, but I'm just telling you, if that happens, know that you have done some algebraic something wrong. All right. Now, what is now that we get down to the answer, okay, great. F prime of x is 2x plus 2. What is the heck, you know, what, what does that even mean? Well, let me draw a picture. Let me draw a picture over here. If I drew this original graph of x squared plus 2x, so that would have, I won't draw a real accurate graph, but it would have zeros at here and here. So it's going to go something like this. That's supposed to go through that dot, but you get the idea. Now, what this derivative tells us is this. Let's say I wanted the derivative at 1. Okay? Let's say that I am I drawing that that's supposed to be at 0, 0. That is a very big dot at 0, 0. Sorry. But over here, let's call this 1. If I wanted to get the derivative at this point and know the slope of that tangent line, I'm saying that this formula, I would have to find f prime at 1. And so I would, could do 4. Right, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 would be 4. So the equation of that, uh, I mean, rather, the uh, slope of that tangent line would be 4. Now, if I wanted to find the slope over here at negative 5. I mean, my drawing is totally not to scale. But if I did f prime at negative 5, I certainly see that the slope is going to be negative. Well, I do 2 times negative 5 plus 2, and I would get negative 6. If I said, what's the derivative at negative 1? What do we get? From our formula, we get 0. 
well, that kind of makes sense because I have a horizontal tangent right there. So this formula gives the slope at any point. And you might be saying, well, why, why do I need to do that? I mean, if, I, if I'm looking for these numbers, couldn't I just do it faster? I kind of like the other way. But what if it asks you for the derivative at, you know, three or four x values, then, man, getting the one formula and then plugging into that formula would take you less amount of time than doing all the different limit statements for that particular x value. And of course, there's a lot more uses to uh, getting this formula as well as we will discover as we move forward. But that's what you're going to be doing this evening. If you look, you don't you see that you don't have a, a ton of problems because they do take a while. I mean, you need to have good notation, remembering that uh, you might have square roots, you might have fractions, you might have to remember the things that we, you know, the complex conjugate. You have to think about uh, how you, multiplying by the conjugate rather, how you uh, clean up those limits, but that's what you need to do on your homework. So work hard on that and we'll come back tomorrow.